Hello, Dr. Brooks. Good Thank morning. you so much for coming in today. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Of course. Well, just to sort of kick things off, I wanted to first start with your childhood. So how did you, how, what was it like growing up in Birmingham, Alabama? You know, I, I think that I had a wonderful childhood. Um, I reflect a lot on it um, these days. My mm -hmm. birthday was recently, so. Mm, happy um, birthday. Yeah, I turned, you know, 58. I'm not afraid to say that, 58. <laughs> so, um, but I do, I reflect a good bit on my childhood and the friends that I had and the way my parents raised mm -hmm. me and um, others that were in my life who were so influential. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I believe that my childhood was tremendous. I think that I learned a lot about, um, like, things like the importance of family. Yes. I think I learned a lot about doing hard things and being challenged. Um, but I also feel like, you know, every day around me was a great deal of love. So I am... Uh, yeah, and everything that I do, I feel like is a reflection of that. One one interesting story for you all is, and I've shared this with other people, but in my book bag that I carry around every day is um, two items. I have mm -hmm. two items in there that are always in there, mm -hmm. and they're both, they're my grandmother's college degrees. So she got um, her college degree in 1957, mm -hmm. And she got her master's degree in 1968. Wow. And so I carry those around with me as inspiration just because I think about that particular time in history and maybe how difficult it was for, you know, her to go to school and yeah, all she that. Did, and so, yes. And so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, childhood wise, um, great childhood, but also too, I, I still reflect on the people that influence me so you've mentioned before <laughs> that you really think that you've inherited your servant's heart from your parents and your grandmother yeah. how do you think they like taught you that well I think what I reflect on my childhood mm -hmm. you know my parents were just very giving mm -hmm. and supportive um, and certainly we weren't wealthy we didn't have a lot but I think they understood that serving and giving was you know the way you had to live your life and so I'm just I was so impressed with that. And um, one of the things that I keep with me um, in my book back today is my grandmother's college degree. Really? She graduated in 1957 with her undergraduate in 1968 with her master's. And mm -hmm. so I keep those with me as motivation because I think when you reflect on that time in history, how difficult it might have mm -hmm. been you know, to get a college degree or to get a master's as a, you know, she was a single female yeah. um, raising three daughters. And so I use that as inspiration. Um, also, too, I reflect on the multiple Saturdays that she would take me to McDonald's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the, I remember the conversations and it was always about character and your name means something, you know, um, one of my favorite verses of scripture is Proverbs 22 and 1, where it's, it's, it reads, it's better to find favor in a good name than riches in silver and mm -hmm. gold. Mm -hmm. And so she used to speak quite a bit about having a good name. And, and I will tell you, one of the things that probably I've turned into a metaphor, um, so she would never eat the bread from her burger you mm -hmm. know she would feed it to pigeons that were outside <laughs> um and so again when I think about that I'm like okay not only was she telling me that I had to be a servant and a giver I guess she maybe was giving because she was feeding the pigeons and I was probably terrified of these birds walking <laughs> around but um those were those are great memories you know mm -hmm. and, um and my mom today is I lost my dad um, in 05 but my mom is still the same person she's mm -hmm. giving and loving and always optimistic so you know that's uh I think you carry those things with you and I'm sure they continue to support you through your journey too they have <laughs> they they really have and um 
you know, but it's not just, I, I think our lives become so much more than just our parents. I mean, yeah. certainly I know you guys have teachers and others, you know, in your school and community that support you. I've had the same thing. Um, I can reflect on so many names. We would be here all day if I reflected on every name. But, um, you know, I specifically remember people and things and how they treated me and how they pushed me, you know, how they saw something in me. And um, I will say this, there's nothing more powerful than people believing in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When people believe in you, it creates this um, inner confidence, in my opinion, mm -hmm. to believe in yourself. And when you put those two together, I just think you can do anything. 100%. Awesome. Yeah. So what were you like as a student? Um, probably not the best, <laughs> um, worked hard. Um, I was quiet. Um, I, um, I don't know. I just cared about what I cared about. You know, I was a basketball player, so I cared about that. Um, I had some really good friends, but I was probably had a, a, level, a degree of, of being introverted. So, you know, just to give you an example, like I never went to a prom. Really? Wow. Never. I never went to a prom. It was just not something that was important to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, you know, maybe a bit introverted, but just um, I worked hard, you know, be student. <laughs> so I think, um, you know, again, just, just kind of a quiet guy, soft-spoken. I'm still a little bit that way. Do you think that there was something early on that sparked you wanting to be an educator? You know, I, not necessarily. I think we go through life feeling like we want to do certain things and we have these visions for ourselves and what we want to do in the future. And ultimately, what I wanted to do was I wanted to be a physical therapist, mm -hmm. but then I quickly realized that that was not what I wanted to do. So. When I got my undergraduate degree, I focused on um, physical education and biology, mm -hmm. which I was putting those together to go to PT school. And so um, I, had a, I had a teaching certificate and I ended up, my grandmother got sick with cancer and so I ended up moving back home and um, I started uh, teaching and became apparent that that was what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. Was there a teacher that, what, that you would say really impacted you? Mm, several. I'm um, sure, yes. Probably the most impactful person on my life mm -hmm. in grade school. I actually had three teachers that I recognized. My fourth grade teacher, Linda Dunn, she was the first um, person that um, really helped me understand that she loved me. You know, she was mm -hmm. that first person outside of your family. You're like, okay, this this lady loves me, mm -hmm. you know. And my seventh grade art teacher, her name was Miss Ware, and she was just amazing and just made me believe that I had some artistic talent and I probably didn't. Um, there was something. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe <laughs> a little bit. But um, so, yeah, she was really, really special. And then... Randy Fuller, who was the first principal here at mm -hmm. Up Mountain, he was the superintendent in, in you know in the role that I'm in before I took this role. So he was my coach, mm -hmm. and so he was just really impactful in my life. And someone who I mean, I, I saw his daughter yesterday and just told her I loved her, gave her a big hug. So he is, you know. There's no question he is family to me. Yes, because yeah. you stay connected all these years, and he's been with you since you were like 15, too. He has, he has, for sure. And so you pl you grew up playing basketball, and because of playing basketball, you were able to get a basketball scholarship to go to Montevallo. So what do you think really got you into playing? You know, I think it was something that was my friends were doing. Mm -hmm. And so my best friend lived next door to me, and he had a full court in his backyard. Wow. So, so he was really cool. He was, <laughs> and he still is cool. So I talked to him, you know, every month or so. Mm -hmm. um, he's my best friend. Um, but we, um, we played every day. Wow. I mean, every day. We would get up early in the morning, 
go out and play. In the summer, we'd take a break when it was really hot, and we would sit between the houses and talk and laugh, and you know. But then we would be right back there playing. So it was, we were home. We were right there. Our parents knew where we were. Everyone from the neighborhood came to play on that court. So mm-hmm. it was, it was a lot of fun growing up doing that. So. Do you have like a skill or like lesson that you like that you've taken from playing basketball for so many years that you still apply to your life now? Um, I think the thing that I learned so much from the game has been how to really push yourself Mm -hmm. um, and how when you think that you don't have anything else to give, you've got more. Yeah. So I think I think work ethic has been um, something that I've really learned. I also believe that um, understanding that you've got to depend on not just yourself, but others to be successful, um, I think is something that I've learned. And also, too, learning how to celebrate other people when they have success and they're standing beside you because you've helped them create success and they've helped you create success. So um, I, I think, again, those are some of the lessons that I learned. So so then you have a basketball scholarship to Montevallo. What was your, can you describe your experience in Montevallo in three words? Um, three words. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, beautiful, I think, um, just relationship building Mm -hmm. took place. Um, and, um, I would say just a tremendous amount of fun. Um, and what's interesting, I didn't really want to go there. Really? I did not. I had a friend who, um, was older who went there. And um, from my high school, and I felt like I didn't want to be in his shadow. Mm. Um, but you know, I was not in his shadow. I ended up, you know, can you, being able to to create my own, mm-hmm. you know, individuality. So, can you expand on it being beautiful a little bit more? I just think the campus is incredibly beautiful, and I think the experience that I had with so many people was beautiful um here's an example that you know i talked about wanting to be a physical therapist well one of my professors she really wanted to help me so one afternoon i met up with her and she took me to shelby baptist hospital to meet some pts to Mm -hmm. you know to give me some insight and that was a beautiful experience in my opinion because she took the time to take this 18 year old kid to really help him learn a little bit more about what he thought he might be dreaming to do. Mm-hmm. So um, that's a beautiful experience. Yeah, um, especially with an educator like that. I've, yeah. I've had my sh- and ed- most educators in my life that really impact me have always been the ones that have like taken extra time sure. out of their day to help me. Yeah. And it's like, it always really is impactful. Yeah. Do you have any, like what some, are some opportunities that you're able to get from being at Montevallo? Um, I think my lots of opportunities. I, um, you know, certainly had opportunities to travel. Um, my freshman year, we went to Mexico City in Monterey, Mexico to play. So that was a great experience. You know, probably my first time going out of the country. So that was fun. Um, I think that I had experiences with meeting great people that I probably would not have met and had long-time friendships with. Um, I think that, you know, my college experience, maybe unlike others, was quite personal um, because still professors um, that were there, I still have relationships with them. Our, my example of that is a couple of weekends ago, I went back for a basketball game mm-hmm. And the athletic director that brought me there, he was there. He's retired. Um, his name is Dr. Leon Davis. He's 93. Wow. So I got to sit with him and, you know, talk and really just thank him for pouring into me as a little 18-year-old kid, but maybe not little, but an 18-year-old kid. Um, so, yeah, I think those things just, you know, just made me love love my experience. 
Um, you and your wife both attended Montevallo, but at different times, did y'all meet there or how did you meet? You know, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> we met, and this is why Oak Mountain is so, we met at Oak Mountain. Really? Oak Mountain is really special to us. So, yeah, I was teaching in another part of Shelby County, and she was a third grade teacher at Oak Mountain Elementary mm -hmm. School. And I am sure that when you guys were in middle school, they had like the expo. Did they have the expo over at the middle school? Like they, I like a carnival. I think so. Yeah. I think so. so we met, um, one of my friends had um, children and I was, came to this expo with them and she was there and that's how we met. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah. So we met, I was, an assistant principal at um, Pelham. And um, we met that day, but it was really just not that big, big of a deal. You know, it was like, hi, nice to meet you, mm -hmm. you know. But then that summer, I was working as the summer school principal at Pelham High School. Mm -hmm. And she and another friend of mine came to my office to be my intern. So, um, yeah, and so it just kind of blossomed from there and um, she was actually leaving Shelby County to um, to go to work on her doctorate so mm -hmm. she went to Auburn she got this full fellowship to go to Auburn wow. so she was actually leaving and you know we weren't dating at the time but we just kind of kept in touch and then the rest is history <laughs> that's awesome uh, 20 years later so it's pretty cool when we were talking before the interview, you mentioned that you did not grow up thinking, oh, I want to be a superintendent. But what did make you want to be a superintendent? Yeah, I, I think what made me want to be a superintendent is that, you know, you start to realize that maybe you have some leadership influence. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been a progression. Like, I never knew I wanted to be an assistant principal, but I had someone encourage me that way. Didn't know I want to be a print, wanted to be a principal, but was encouraged that way. And then, of course, I took a district position, um, actually in another school district. I left Shelby County. I was a principal at Thompson Middle School. I left Shelby County and went to Talladega County. Mm -hmm. And um, I had two really amazing superintendents, and they were super encouraging as well from the start of me serving over there. And so... You know, I went back and finished my doctorate and, um, you know, I think through my relationships with them and, of course, coming back and working for Mr. Fuller, who was the superintendent, you know, you start to realize maybe, you know, there's some influence that you can have in the future. So um, it was a progression. I don't think any of the things that I've ever done, like I said, I'm going to do that. Yeah. You know, so. So. For me, it's, it would be daunting just to run for like an, an SGA election. What was it to have to run in an election for superintendent? Um, daunting. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, also really rewarding because you get to meet so many people um, and you, you get to share the things that are important to, to you in regard to helping students and creating school atmospheres and cultures where kids can flourish. And so I think that was the greatest reward. Um, and, you know, and I gained so many friends um, through that whole process. It was long days, long nights, hard. Um, you know, I think probably the, the greatest struggle was, you know, sometimes you have to deal with misinformation. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel like all the time, you know, you just have to keep moving forward. I mean, I think you have to, you have to know who you are and um, keep showing people who you are. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was one of the most difficult things that I've ever done. But again, I learned through growing up, you know, how to work, how to, when you don't think you can go much more, you just keep pushing. Um, yeah. And, you know, that was, um, that was, uh, I, I was really just thrilled and honored 
to, to win and of course over the last five years to serve so and then also when you were first running for superintendent you were interviewed by oak mountain media alum emily key in eighth grade oh, well, i love her <laughs> i love her too <laughs> she has been a great influence on both of me and drew um, and you all discussed some of your goals for when you, for what you would do as superintendent. How have your goals referred then versus now? Um, I think a lot of the things that we had um, or um, on my leadership team we had as goals, I think we're moving in that direction. You know, we wanted to um, create more innovative opportunities for our students and certainly I think what we're doing here is, is part of innovation. The studio is amazing and of course, Mr. Milton has just been, you know, he's been great with that. Um, I think we're doing that with some of the programs we have at other schools. Like for instance, we have a surgical tech program at Chelsea High School. It is flourishing mm -hmm. and our kids are having the opportunity to go into surgery and um, at a hospital and, and getting to experience that. They're getting credentialed in the medical field. We've got another program at Calera, same thing at, um, Helena High. So I think what we've done is tried to create this atmosphere where kids have opportunities for future jobs based on what markets look like now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we're moving in the right direction. I think, you know, one of the things that I believe is we've created great cultures in our schools. And, 100%. and, and so and with developing culture is always a work in progress because ultimately, you know, things happen, you have pitfalls, but you, you keep pressing forward, you keep reflecting on the things that are going well. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. Um, I think we've been able to um, add, you know, to our buildings and facilities, um, which has been a goal to enact some of the innovative programs. So um, we talked earlier about um, an aviation program mm -hmm. that we're implementing. Um, which will be exciting um, for one of our communities. Um, and I'm particularly excited about some of our kids getting like credentialed with in using drones because that's a that's a big market in aviation right now. Um, so um, I, I'm excited about where we're headed. Um, I feel like we're moving in the right direction. I, I, hope, really, I, I hope you guys feel that way. I really do yeah. feel like that way. I mean, for me at Oak Mountain High School, like I have this broadcast program and then we also have the new music building. I mean, you've been impacted a lot, the new music building for band. What yeah. do you think? Uh, I, I think that building is absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I, I think that all of the programs that get to be benefited by that building is yeah. just It's incredible. tremendous, yes. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm I'm thankful that you guys have that opportunity. I love the band here, by the way. It's <laughs> awesome. I love it, too. So do you have a favorite accomplishment? Um, you know, actually, to be honest with you, I, I really don't reflect on that. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell mm -hmm. you this. You know, if I have to speak on something that I am very proud of, I'm proud of something that just happened recently. So two days ago... I got a call from the president of the University of Montevallo, mm -hmm. and he asked me to come in May and be the commencement speaker really? for graduation. That's awesome. So, yeah, like I am thrilled about that. And it's, um, again, you know, reflecting on my time there, it's just, it, it will be a full circle moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, I am really greatly honored by the opportunity to stand in front of graduates and offer some inspiration mm -hmm. and, you know, tell some stories. So yeah, it's, yeah, I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. But other things, I, I'm not sure how much I think about them. I mean, I think you guys are the reward too, you know, just the relationship that you get to develop with you guys. I mean, you know, we've been, I came by to see you and we've been emailing and getting to this point. So, um, Love seeing the band and um, other things that happen in this school and other schools. So, yeah, I, those are the rewards. Those are the things that I reflect the most on. So, In your opinion, what does the future of Shelby County look like? I think the future is, um, is really going to be coupled with who we continue to become. And, and let me... Let me kind of get a little bit more granular with that. I think 
the future is going to be programs and uh, academic opportunities that truly benefit the kids in that time period. I think, you know, we live in a world where jobs and opportunities um, continue to change rapidly. Mm -hmm. So I think what we will do as a district is continue to focus on how we can create and prepare you for those opportunities. I think that we're going to continue to see growth. Um, this is a, continues to be a fastly growing county. Um, I think as the economy gets better, we're going to see more growth, which means we'll have more kids, which means we'll have to do some things with buildings and, you know, communities. Um, but I, you know, overall, I think the future is bright because we have such a tremendous community, um, not just here in Oak Mountain, but all over Shelby County. We have something unique and special, you know, in every community. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, I think the, the future is, is bright for our district because we have so many amazing teachers. It's, it's funny, um, like I used to be the young guy. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm the old guy in the room, mm -hmm. but I'm, I look at our teaching you know, staff and I'm just thrilled with what it looks like in the future. Certainly also we have great young leaders, so um, I think the future is really bright. I agree. Yeah. So to sort of wrap things up, on top of the commencement speech, you've also are District 5 Superintendent of the Year. How do, how do you feel about that? What was the experience like? Um, you know, it was rewarding mm -hmm. to be recognized by your colleagues. You know, it's an award that you get from other superintendents. So District 5 is this Birmingham metro area, mm -hmm. all the districts in this area. So for my colleagues to feel like, you know, I'm worthy of, you know, recognition and worthy to represent them as superintendent of the year was really quite, quite an honor. I'm just, you know, thrilled about that. So. It is well deserved. Well, <laughs> thank you. I mean, there are a lot of great superintendents in this area. So um, I am, I'm, I'm really thrilled that they saw me as the person this year, so. Well, thank you so much for coming into the studio, yes, Dr. Brooks. You. This has been a great experience. Thank you so much. Drew. I've loved getting to know you better. Yeah, Drew, Ashley, thank you guys so much for having me. And I, you know, wish for nothing but success for you both in the future. So, yes, it's so both much. our senior years this year. Wow. I'm looking wow. forward to it. It's moving pretty fast, huh? A couple it of is. months away. Yes. Yeah. It's May 23rd. I'm like, I'm really excited for it. But also at the same time, I'm like, no, I don't want to deal with this. Please just push it back a little bit more. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. Well, I would, I would, I would tell you both, you know, just reflect on every good thing that has taken place. And, you know, have great memories and, um, you know, maybe come back, you know, and, and share with, um, you know, other students your experience moving forward and how things, things that took place right here have helped you. So mm -hmm. yeah. um, I would encourage you in that um, because everyone needs to understand how what they're doing right now is going to help them in the future. And when you have that future experience, it's great to help them maybe visualize it yes. through through your accomplishments. So. 100%. Yeah. And I think like high school is such a good opportunity, especially at Oklahoma High School, to like do what, if you have a dream, you can definitely like find resources to do that here. And like with Mr. Milton has been such a great influence with me and like such a great encourager in that like I really feel prepared. Sure. And it's kind of funny because I'm planning on going into film production and I'm going to be taking some, I every single day I'm getting some piece or bit of leadership advice from Mr. Milton, which is very appreciated. And so my broadcast and my film experience the past four years has always been like touched by leadership. And I'm going to be going into film production in college and be like, where's the leadership book studies? Where's the John C. Maxwell? This yeah. is not right. Yeah. But I feel I'm very excited. Well, everything that, um, You've you've gained from him. You'll take it with you, and yes. you'll you'll be the leader. You'll be the leader. So.